Today's episode is brought to you by Tua T Fitness and the Sounds in Cinema podcast. The Everything Sequel podcast contains explicit language. Because we learned it from you, Dad. Hello and welcome to the Everything Sequel Podcast. This is the Terminator edition. Today, we talk Terminator Genesis. My name is Michael Schantz of the How Dare You Awards. Locking me in his laser sights is Tom Stewart of Lonesome Whistle Productions. Say hello to the good people, Tom. Goddamn time-traveling robots covering up their goddamn tracks. <laughs> Is that J.K.? J.K. Simmons knows what kind of a movie he's in. He knows exactly what kind of movie he's in. I have a note here that says uh, he was making up a lot of his dialogue, that there are moments where you could see Arnold Schwarzenegger go, what the fuck? <laughs> I think the line where he says uh, something about breaking in the door, you know, for people, like the, like a, a weapon, like a mm-hmm. shotgun for for busting open doors they call it a door buster or whatever he goes you know for people that can't do that on their own i think that was improvised oh it certainly sounds like it it's great but i gotta say you on the whole you know when this movie indulges in goofy comedy i'm not mad at it no yeah i'm i'm not either i i know i saw i watched the um especially after having watched terminator salvation which is devoid of fun or humor at all yeah and life. There's, and there's, yeah, joy. there's, there's just not, there's no, and nothing story, to and denote. And, uh, yeah, exactly. But uh, you can, you can, uh, you, you know, that's the the last one on the feed. So, <laughs> um, but I just watched the honest trailers uh, on Dark Fate, mm. and you know this, the comedy in this movie was kind of the fall guy, was kind of like the. The scapegoat. The scapegoat for the yeah. oh okay, um, and you know and they and they did like a, it begins with a little montage of of like some of the um, more slapstick stuff from from Genesis, mm. and I got to say I, I I I find it perfectly entertaining and reasonable and and some of it is really well executed so I'm I'm fine with it. That's not that's not. I still don't think that's the reason why Dark Fate was so unsuccessful. I know I've heard that theory that mm-hmm. um, it's not even people was people were so put off by the by the goofiness of, of of Genesis that they weren't you know even a like more serious tone movie couldn't make up for it. I don't think that's I, I think that's a false um, yeah false narrative yeah. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are, in fact, talking about Terminator Genesis, spelled Genesize, 2015 movie directed by Alan Taylor, who did do Thor The Dark World and oh. most recently The Many Saints of Newark. Oh, that's right. And yeah. that's horrible. <laughs> that's a horrible, horrible piece of work. Uh, I say that as perhaps the biggest Sopranos fan in existence. You hated it that much, huh? Yeah, it was. It was. It was. It, yeah, yeah. Da- David, you know, David Chase is one of you know he's like George Lucas level of not understanding what's good about his best product. Um, but the that's really interesting because I I, I my biggest gripes with that movie were um direction Mm. i think chase needed to direct it uh no that's interesting not alan taylor but um but i don't feel that about this movie at all i think i think it's i don't either i there are this movie's an anomaly this movie's (laughs) this movie has plenty of bad shit anomalies yeah but i'm (laughs) but i'm never mad at it no no never mad at it Never mad at it, even when it does stupid things and it yeah, does by, by the this, bucket load. I guess it kind of goes back to movies we've talked about in the past. We talked about Die Hard with a Vengeance, the big swings. We we kind of always appreciate Steady big on. swings. <laughs> I don't think it's that. I don't think it's that level of quality. No, no, no. It's not. It's not. <laughs> but I just mean. I was going to say more a good day to Die Hard, which this movie has a connection to. <laughs> okay. You mean just through the actor, uh, or something else, and CGI? Okay, 
<laughs> from this CGI from this era, making everything look like a cartoon. Yeah. Carry on. Sorry, I did. I, uh, I your flow. I stepped into to your time flow. No, now. you're fine. I guess <laughs> what what I meant was that this movie goes out of its way to take narrative risks with the franchise, rendering everything you've seen before it <laughs> null and void. Yeah. And that's kind of what I like about it. I don't think it works great, but no. I, I I really appreciate the I effort. Do. I really appreciate the effort. It's weird. Like with, with Terminator three, you and I could not be more different how we feel about this movie. I think with with Genesis, something something's disrupted the time stream because I know, right? We I, I think, you know, it's we're finishing each other's sentences about 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 this movie i feel exactly the same way and it's a kind of an un it, it's difficult to talk about because it's sort of unquantifiable yeah it's it that's what i mean it's unwieldy it's trying to magical, talk magical to, to use a, a shantian term a magical elixir <laughs> yeah but it but also you know not enough to say that it's a good movie right which to me is fascinating it's like well, what is what, what is that distinction you yeah know? it's like yeah it's like you you, you know it's like this is perfectly enjoyable fare, mm -hmm. and yet I also know it's definitely not good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like I never, for a second, <laughs> right, would try to try to argue to anyone that this is a good movie. Yeah, you can't is, you you can't back it up in that way. No, but I guess because because the problems of this movie, and it's like, are, what do you do if somebody says, "No, this movie's really great. I love this movie." What do you do then? Yeah. Because you enjoy the movie, but you want to tell them they're still wrong. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I think it's because because the bones of this movie don't work. Mm hmm Because, well, you know, you, you, if, you, if you stand outside... Are the there movie, bones you, to this movie? That's, right, you know, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there are brit brittle Rocky yeah, Balboa exactly. bones. Yeah, um, Those bones no, need some like, calcium. Like you stand outside from the movie, and you go, "That's a very badly written screenplay." You, mm -hmm. you, you're not get, you know, you're not graduating with that screenplay. Yeah, right. Um, and you know, tonally as well. Like, what are we doing here, guys? I would say in the direction. Hmm. Tonally, it's off too to me. That's what. It, yeah, no, like it. It. Uh, yeah, I don't just mean in the writing. I mean, okay. I mean in the. I mean. Uh, specifically in, in the direction it's like and yet when when the movie indulges in a certain kind of tone i'm f i sort of I, i'm okay with i it, settle right. into it every time i just kind of slot into it and go okay i guess yeah i'll sure, enjoy this why not it is. <laughs> yeah exactly uh i wonder how much arnie helps you know we've just had an arnie-less movie mm -hmm. and Boy, is there a lot of Arnie in this movie. I yeah, mean, he's right. He's the star of, more than any other Terminator movie, he's the star of this movie. He's not really sharing the screen with with anyone but that, at his level. My right. I mean, you know, J.K. Simmons in the character at the stakes, but, you know. But, the, I mean, they're, you know, we're not talking about slouches here. No, no, no. They're like, this good, movie solid him. actors, all yeah. of them. Everyone involved in this movie is a good, solid actor. Uh, I wonder if that's a specific choice because, like, like Amelia Clark, see, so drops, in, drops into the role well. I and... still think she's miscast, though. Yeah. Yes. Well, no, I don't think she. See, I'll put it this way: if Game of Thrones hadn't been on the air, there's no way she would have been considered for this role. Right. I wouldn't go so far as to say she's miscast, and I actually think she slots in well, considering that she's stepping into the shoes of of, of both Linda Hamilton and Sarah Connor, mm -hmm. and the fact and the fact that she does that, and by as the movie goes on, I don't really mind that it's her and that this is the character. Um, I just yeah, I think. She's a decent, like everyone in this is sort of a decent enough actor to pull off what they they have to do. Yeah, however, so I however, agree with Arnie, that. Arnie is on this fucking acting upswing. <laughs> right. His comic timing is through the roof in this movie. Yeah, it is. And it gets better in the next movie. Mm hmm. 
By the time this guy's 90, he's going to be fucking... He's going to be Daniel doing stand-up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's so um, good. He's like every, I have so many notes in this movie. It's like, that was an effortless li line delivery. Mm -hmm. He nailed the comedy there. Yeah. That bit should be stupid, but it isn't because he executed it well. <laughs> they make a... I mean, in that Honest trailer, they make a big deal of that um, half smile that he does. Mm-hmm. Where he's trying to smile. Yeah. I think that is a beautiful piece of physical comedy. I think it's funny. And it's not just because it looks like Clyde the orangutan from Every Which Way But Lose. Like <laughs> Every Which Way You Can. It really does. <laughs> it's just, I mean, it's, Deep it's cut. Like everything. What a reference. It's everything. <laughs> yeah, we may have to do that one day. That's um, amazing. Uh, yeah, there were two of those movies. Mike. Yeah. Can you, if you come, one Unforgiven, two loose movies. I'm telling you, I mean, well, go on, but the sequel, uh, any which way you can. Oh, I've seen it. I, I, got, I can't even tell you how many times I've watched that movie. Over yeah. 50 times. Me I used too. to watch Me that movie constantly as a kid. Yeah, I had, I had both, I had both of them on VHS. Yeah. Recorded from TV when I was growing up and I watched them on a loop. Um. But I just, yeah, I just think this, it's, uh, you know, we're still, we're still dealing in old paradigms for judging Arnie's performance skills, which are mm -hmm. based on a different era when he was less competent. Right. And I, right, I, I right. wish people would just be like, would just sort of like break down his performances in the way they do every other like lead actor in, in Hollywood. And I guess the fact that he's still playing Terminators is maybe... Maybe it doesn't help that. him, but yeah, right. <laughs> but, you know, it's just... He he's just looks so accomplished in this movie. And the foundation... His, the, the, weirdly enough, even though this movie and the next movie could not be more different, the foundation of the performance in this movie, he carries over into the next movie. So it's sort of the same yeah. character business backstory. Sort of. and I, and that was one of the huge, the, 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 the fantastic surprises of Dark Fate. It's like, it's like, well, he did all his character work in Genesis yeah. for this <laughs> version of the character, so we don't need to spend so much time on it because we're we're all familiar with. You but know, that's what a, I referenced what that. An off, what an off-duty Terminator looks right. like. Right, <laughs> and I kind of referenced that in in our ranking episode where I said, once you get past Terminator Two, well, really past Terminator Three. The, the the sequels are constantly resetting. It's, yeah, it's like we're just starting. We're starting over, and it's a direct sequel to two. Really, they are even discounting three. Yeah, and but it's remarkable that they all borrow from each other. And one of the things that they borrow in Dark Fate is Arnie's performance from this movie. Right, and the the one of the biggest surprises here because this is a this is a also a huge reset of Salvation. Is that this movie begin almost picks up from the end of Salvation? Yes, I didn't remember. I mean, I've never seen Salvation, so how would I know? But I didn't expect that at all. I didn't expect it to begin with John Connor and Kyle Reese chumming it up <laughs> before he sends them off. Like I was like, but not not only is like not only did I think, huh, that's interesting that you know we um that we're kind of trying to have some continuity with salvation even though we we're rebooting that idea of the series mm -hmm. like i thought you know that that reminded me of like rocky balboa and and how it's like it's like we're not saying this movie didn't happen yeah right right we're not saying we didn't make this mistake what sure. we're saying is we're, we're moving on from it but we're you know let's and arguably there's more character development for John Connor in that brief exchange with Kyle Reese in the first scene of this movie. Right. And the entirety, then the entirety of Salvation. The entirety of Salvation, exactly. so much more out of that one scene than anything in Salvation. <laughs> so, you know, like, minutes into the movie, Genesis, you know, Genesis is... You're already appreciating it, appreciating the movie yeah. minutes in when it's you watch it back to it's back like, when you just watch Salvation. It's going over. It's going over and above to pay tribute to something that doesn't need to be paid tribute to because mm -hmm. I guess it's nice. It's a nice movie that likes to do stuff like that, and 
it does everything that Salvation did but better. And we're minutes in. And Yeah, exactly. This movie, and that's the thing. Because we've talked about this before. Say a movie like the first Terminator or Terminator 2. Movies in that era were really good at exposition. Yeah. 15, 20 minutes into the movie, you're set. You know everything you need to know, and now we're going to move on. And Terminator Salvation is formless. <laughs> like, yeah. like, it's like a bunch of organs with no skin. <laughs> and exposi- I around. would say exposition, lack of exposition is not the problem here. It's that there's nothing to expose. Yeah, right. Because what it, what it what is being exposed keeps changing. True. Like constantly well, changing. It keeps changing. But at the outset, we also kind of, as an audience member, you have a lot of information based on everything yeah. you that's seen before. So, and it, you know, you're caught up in a way. Where where good exposition counts in this movie is that I learned a lot about time travel, possibly yeah. more than any of the other movies have ever said about time travel. Ever, right? There's more time travel theory in this movie than any other Terminator Terminator movie. movie. All of which are time travel movies. Right. Well, let's take care of some business first. Uh, <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. We, we've been chatting a while. 27% on Rotten Tomatoes, Tom. So this is lower than Salvation. That's, this is that's lower ridiculous. than Salvation. And that's, that's absurd to me. That's... Uh, and that's also... An, that's an alternate timeline right it there. It made more money worldwide, but... I... I'm surprised to say, okay, a budget of $155 million, an opening weekend of $27 million, that's less than Salvation, and only 897 in the USA. We didn't like this movie. People didn't go out and see it. And it, uh, world, but worldwide, once again, the world just loves our action movies for whatever yeah. reason, $440.6 million. So fatigue's already setting in. Yeah. It's not just Dark Fate. It's it's people are people are tired of Terminator. People are tired of Terminators. Yeah, and this is I mean, 2015 is the recent past. Yes, right. I, I mean, it's hard to believe there's a more recent Terminator movie than this. Right. But still, yeah. 2015. In my head, this this was closer to Salvation than it was uh, Dark Fate, but mm-hmm. it's not. Yeah, exactly. I mean. But it is weird to think of that it's already been seven years since this movie came out. Right. And you know. Because it doesn't feel that long. I watched, I remember I watched it on, I didn't see it in the theater. I watched it on a, on like a, well, I had like a free weekend of Cinemax. <laughs> Put it on in the middle of the afternoon. And you know, happy as a lark. <laughs> That's great. So, I, mean, I mean, that's it. You know, there's certain kinds of movies. It's like. That's like this is you I mean this is junk of the highest order. Yeah. But it's new. I've only got Cinemax for another day. <laughs> for it go for it scrambles again. Yeah, right. This is I'm watching Arnie, I'm laughing at him. JK Simmons is good. It's not, you know, it's it's, oh, it's perfect. It is a strange bird, this movie. Yeah, it's a bird it's, with no wings. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but also and, not a penguin. And possibly no feathers. Cool. But, but penguins are cool. I'm not saying I'm not dissing penguins. Penguins are cool. Yeah, exactly. This is, this is a like a, a this a, is a penguin movie. No, this is a no, 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 no. This is a bird that's just penguins are too too cool for that. Um, this is a bird with no wings, a strange bird with no wings that isn't a penguin. Okay, fine. That the penguin goes. I mean, I know I've not got wings, but, uh, you know, I'm right. this bird. You know, it's funny because from the outset, I mean, we're going to start in the future, basically. Yeah. And we get what's supposed to be a rousing speech by John Connor. And you kind of feel like you should be rolling your eyes, and you do at the, at you know... It doesn't oh, have the I gravitas. Think the know- I think the movie knows that you're rolling your eyes. D- is that what you think? Yeah, because what does it do? It throws a spanner in that fan service. Mm-hmm. That in, in the middle of that inspirational um, speech, he gets cyborged. Right. 
and it's like, hey, remember this this messiah? Remember your messiah? He's now the the enemy's messiah. He's, right. And so again, big, to me, I mean, that's the going of the big swings. Maybe I was just going to say about. that's that's the biggest swing in the movie, right? You turn your hero into the villain. Yeah. And it doesn't it, it doesn't really work, but it's fun in no. that moment. Yeah, exactly. It's 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 a really fun moment because I And think... Jason Clark is good. Yeah. He's I fun. mean he's 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 one of the better John Connors. Yeah, right. <laughs> and there's a lot of them. But you have like I mean before as they're attacking the Skynet, you're getting you, you start to feel uneasy because you see some bad CGI. Oh yeah, yeah and yeah. some slow motion. And you start thinking, oh, are we going off the rails? Mm-hmm. And, but then, like it's you also, said, also, we get that you know, conversation with John Connor, and all of a sudden you start thinking, hey, okay. But it's, And it's then like, you see something you've never seen before, which yeah. is hand over the mouth, gotcha, right as he's leaving to go back to the past, right as Kyle Reese is leaving to go to the past. I, I like... And all of that's interesting. Yeah, I like that they... because. The way I saw it was, you know, he, he he makes this he makes this rousing speech, and then you know it's undercut by, you know, his, his the time travel being hijacked. But also, and this is this interesting. This movie's attitude towards fan service is really interesting to me, because it, again, it's a have your cake and eat it situation. Mm-hmm. Because it, it's full on fan service and right from the beginning. You yeah, know, we're, right. We're already past the the, the you know. Uh, digital army created to reshoot a scene that already exists in the canon. Yeah. So you're already in real fan service territory here. Um well even just with little things you have, you know. But I, this is the I, I, I think I like... spoke to this in our last episode where we have a different incarnation of John Connor because now he's yeah. he is the person in charge he's no longer the person not in charge like yeah. the last movie so he is in charge but now he's seen by the soldiers as a bit of a prophet yeah so he's telling them when we go in this room there's going to be a time displacement machine and everybody sees a time displacement machine and goes whoa how'd you know that yeah. but it's like he's keeping it secret from everybody yeah. the things that he knows which i'm not sure i understand why he has to do that and in every other movie because he's seen Star Trek and he knows... As I understand it, he asks Kyle Reese to go to the past. And he knows he has to, or else he'll never be right. born. But but, the, but, but you have this but, moment of people volunteering, and then Kyle Reese says, I'll do it. <laughs> but uh, but what, what, what interest, what kind of interests me... So you have, you basically you have Digi- a new Digiani, a slightly better Digiani... <laughs> in like he he's going through the like you're talking when the Kyle goes back now when we actually no no see no, the... no 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 Bef- oh. even before because we see that we see Arnie eighties Arnie Terminator go back first. oh right 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 and then he's there at the Griffith Observatory we reenact that scene yeah which is very fan servicey yes then we get to see a moment that you think would be on fans wish list but let me like, ask you no, so... no, listen listen okay listen, go no, ahead okay the thing that would be on fans wish list which would be the it's literally this is your rogue one running with the death star plans yeah because right. this is this is like 10 seconds before the beginning of terminator correct so it goes straight it's like it's like rogue one into new hope we're doing the same thing it's it, but then but both those things are disrupted and mm-hmm. undercut so like you know, uh, is it? It's another Terminator, isn't it? And it's 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 nine, ninety one Terminator comes, a ninety one Terminator comes out of nowhere, and changes the timeline in nineteen eighty four, and then John Connor gets cyborged mm-hmm. in in the other timeline, and in both those, in in both those moments, it's like it's like here's your fan service. Actually, we're taking away your fan service. And yeah, right. We're fucking with you. I like that. Yeah. And it doesn't pay off. You know, in the end, I think they settle on doing fan service for fan service sake as the movie goes on. But in this moment, at least it's a little bit of kind of 
Push well, that's the thing. I mean, it's 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 repetitive in nature of fan service of over and over and over again, where you kind of get fatigued by it, don't you? Yeah, you, you, it doesn't. It kind of doesn't. That's the the problem. I think is it. It doesn't, doesn't feel like a payoff after a while, you know. But I think the payoff is, you know, fan service for fan service sake. I think it is like it's like, oh, wouldn't it be great if Terminator One and Terminator Two fought each other? Like so, art, oh, like, that's what I wanted to ask you earlier. So when that like the a video first time. Game. <laughs> yeah, the first time you see this movie and we're at the Griffith Observatory and 1984 Naked Arnie comes out. Yeah. And you wish Bill Paxton and uh, what's his name? Uh, the bad guy from Cobra were still there, but they're not. And suddenly yes. old Arnie shows up. Correct. What's your first thought in that moment? I mean, yeah, like happy, sad, we no, like what, what, like no, what do well, you? No, I'm, I'm thinking. Yeah, I'm thinking. Well, I'm, first of all, I'm thinking, why can't we just show the scene from Terminator? May, That's my issues, first thought too. Rights, yeah, rights issues. It's got to be rights issues because there's no way you would spend the money to create a Digiani to film a scene that already exists in canon, right? Am I am I crazy? I don't know. Well, maybe the yeah, well maybe to me to me they enough. I, I to know. me that's what I kept wondering was that. You're seeing all the things you saw in 1984 over again, but there's no care to take uh, within the film. Uh, like, I kept wondering, would it have been better for Alan Taylor to at least give the grainy quality of that movie? Right, yeah. yeah. That kind of thing. Uh, yeah. But, but we but have also that. This also, mov this movie gives zero fucks yeah, whose right. feet it steps on. That's true. Because... Later on in the movie, you know, Joe Morton is recast. Yeah. And my note is, I'm sure Joe Morton was available. This movie does not <laughs> right. give a fuck whose yeah. feet it steps on. And, you know, imagine the audacity of reshooting an iconic scene from James Cameron's The Terminator. Right. In a Terminator franchise. As if to say, Jimmy, this is how it's done. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. This I mean, this sequel has many things, but it's a sequel with balls. Yeah. I yes. mean, like you say, the what what's a bigger swing than saying, "Here's your messiah everyone. Now he's our villain." Right. And we make no apologies for that and he's never going to be redeemed. Ever. Right. Yeah. There's no Darth Vader story arc for this guy. All right. He's That's our a... villain now. Yeah, exactly. Actually the, actually the next one probably doubles down on that if anything. Mm -hmm. like, he didn't even he didn't even live to be a villain <laughs> well this is a good place to start let's take a break and then we'll come back how about that <laughs> sounds good all right right after this everyone Does the coronavirus have you feeling oogie? Have you been sitting on your couch for weeks? Nay, have you been sitting on there for months? Well, it's time for you to get back in shape. Check out To A T Fitness. You can find them on Instagram. You can find them on Facebook. To A T Fitness was started by Tina Bernard. She is ready and raring to go to help you get back into the shape you want to get into. They've got all kinds of classes. They've got outdoor in-person classes. They've got online classes if that's what you prefer. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to get back in shape. You're going to find a variety of exercises. You're going to have strength training, cardio, weightlifting, even fun five-minute burnouts that will push you to your limits. So get off the couch, get into shape. Go ahead and check out To A T Fitness. Tina Bernard has got you for all your needs. I know her personally. She's fantastic. You're not going to meet a better person to help you become the new you. Check it out. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen. Tom and I are here trying to make sense out of Terminator Genesis. A fool's errand. The 2000. Yeah, the 2015 movie directed by Alan Taylor. All right, uh, you know, we've been waxing poetic about this movie a while. We haven't really gotten into the narrative any further than the Griffith Observatory. But neither is the movie. Right. I think um, the narrative of this movie starts too quickly. 
then it doesn't get going for about an hour. Okay. And then it all happens at once. Yeah, right. That's my overall note for the screenplay and why I think it's definitely a bad movie. Because no good movie has a screenplay like that. Mm hmm. But I'm not hating it on a micro level. That's the difference. That's the thing. I mean, we, you know, I was just saying off air that it's a real roller coaster ride trying to figure out what you think about this movie in the first, say, 20 minutes because yeah. there's so much canon mm -hmm. from the Terminator franchise that's fucked with. Yeah. I can't even begin to tell you what I was reading about just trying to get the same Nikes that they had from the first movie. I, like, they had to call Nike and have them, oh. like, do a remolding and and make us, us, you know, however many pairs they made, 20 pairs or whatever. But okay, they had I take, to... I take it back. That's a fool's errand. Yeah, like, they, they made Nike... <laughs> remake those shoes again because they couldn't find any anywhere yeah i mean it's it's in the end you know it, there's a few interesting wrinkles in the beginning but in the end it's it's you know it's fan service 101 it's like everything just has to look how it looks and the only variation is well but this is where i think it's actually more it, it's potentially more interesting than who, if, if Arnie from Terminator 1 and Arnie from Terminator 2 fought, who would win? Like, you know, mm -hmm. a two per, a two player video game kind of thing. <laughs> right. Which this movie does resemble, and I think that's fine. Um, because the other layer of that is just these this constant, these sort of what-if scenarios set within the Terminator universe. Uh-huh. Right. Which is a very... You know, contemporaneously very popular style of franchise storytelling. Marvel had all the the What If series, which is kind of doing what they do in this movie with the Marvel characters. Yeah, in this movie, it feels like it's on steroids, though. Yeah, exactly. Well, I'd, I mean, you like the movie more than I did, so I would say the Spider-Man No Way Home, the stuff about multiverse in there, it's a, it's a similar kind of tone you can say what you want about execution but uh oh i would like, say that movie's far better executed than this movie <laughs> but you know it's like it's looking at it's at least looking at time travel as a set of possible a set of narrative possibilities possibilities sure and i don't think the other movies actually do that i mean this entire storyline is generated by a paradox mm -hmm. the idea of this movie does not exist pre-paradox Right. You've got to have it. Like, and that, and to, like that's, you know, we've talked before about, you know, the Planet of the Apes movies, how they use paradoxical storytelling, how the other movies in this series did. I think this is the this is the one where they're actually opening themselves up to those possibilities mm -hmm. um, and saying, fuck, fuck cohesion. Right. That's a, we're that's gonna, a we're thing. We're going to put a big old so paradox I guess dump that's... in the middle of this. That's that's the part that I wrestle with within this movie because this movie is saying, "Don't give a fuck what you did, Cameron." Really is could really care is. fucking less, and you have to kind of admire that. But I also am a little offended. <laughs> well, you, you know, you have to admire it as you know, in the same way uh, Robert De Niro in Goodfellas, you know, when. When Christopher Malta, <laughs> when Spider call, calls out, yeah, right, exactly. Joe Pesci and he gives, you know, he gives him a tip. It's like that. It's like, it's like you probably shouldn't go around saying those things, but but good on you. You got, you got some balls on you, kid. Right, yeah. And because and, by the and time the going we... audience is Joe Pesci, he just yeah. blows him away. <laughs> I mean, so you know, within the the guys of this movie, we're at the Griffith Observatory. We have this, I mean, <laughs> this huge set piece of a fight. Yeah. Where it's you've had thirty years to prepare for this moment, right? Or I can't remember how long. How long has he been there? <laughs> I don't want to think about that. Yeah. Okay. So okay, Arnold, yeah, he's, yeah. Suffice um, to say, Arnold's been there a long time, and he and Sarah Connor have been preparing for this one moment. Mm -hmm. She seems to be behind uh, a gun that would take care of this Terminator uh, without Arnold having to fight him. <laughs> Right. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, but then we don't get to see T1 Arnie fight T2 Arnie. Exactly. 
so we're little not going to let out. that happen. So we have the fight, and then she gets the gun, the the enormous rifle, and then you know we're taking care of business. Now we're following Kyle Reese. I almost said Crease. Been watching too much. <laughs> I almost combined them. Due it's to, all part of the same to, 80s to, cake. Yeah, exactly. Kyle Reese, John Crease. So we now we're 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 still firmly implanted in the '84 Terminator. We're still saying "fuck you," James Cameron. We're reimagining how all of this happened. We got a new bum. We got you know. It's true. Everything yeah. looks cleaner and nicer. It's like and, why reenact? Is my question. It's like yeah. It's like why aren't we just seeing? But I don't. know. But it's just because you have How's to that have different from Back to the Future Part Two. Like, I, like it's it's. Yeah, but you're using Back different to the actors. Part two, and everyone goes, "Oh, it's amazing!" They inserted themselves <laughs> in the in the movie. <laughs> and but you don't but have we're... Michael Bn, and you don't have Linda Linda Hamilton. You have Jai Courtney. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess right. It's the so you of, have to refilm it, don't Valley, you? Isn't it? It's the ersatz quality of it. Yeah, you're yeah. Right. But all of a sudden, out of nowhere, T one thousand. It's it's like a again, it's like a teenager telling you a story. It really then, is. It's and then he it, came in, and yeah. then another Terminator comes in, and then, then another. But it's Terminator a T one thousand. And then McG hovers by and says, "Make it a robot snake," and then we kill him. Yeah, right. <laughs> and you know, at some point, somebody. Whether it's Alan Taylor or, or you know, who, some somebody uh, at the studio says, and then Sarah Connor comes in in a truck and says, come with me if you want to live. Right. Yeah. And I kind of like the subversion of the inversion. The, you know, this, you, <laughs> <laughs> you, <laughs> you think you're going to get. There's this thick, ever spinning inversion. And, yeah, and, right. And I mean, you think you're going to get the lines the 19- of dialogue in this movie <laughs> because because we go so far as to see the Nikes and see the coat take off the rack, and you think you're getting that entire scene yeah. done again, and suddenly it's inverted, and so you subvert the whole thing. Yeah. I mean, you're already doing that because he's on the run from the T1000, but but you're playing both sides, aren't you? Yeah. Right. You're doing pure past. You're doing like self plagiarism. Is that yeah, a term? I don't know. Right, yeah, right. You're doing self plagiarism, and then at some point you go, you 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 throw a spanner in the works, mm-hmm. and then it all changes, and then you're in a what if scenario. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the the movie's kind of like latching on to a style of storytelling that is definitely gaining currency in franchises, but it's in. It doesn't know what to do with those ideas. So yeah, I think you might like, be right about it's that. It's going like time. Tra- what can we do with time travel? What if scenarios? Fan service paradoxes. Okay, how do those work together? No idea. Don't know. And we're never yeah, going right. to find out because it's only a two-hour movie, and yeah, this is our first try. We don't have time for that. They just have to get out of the building. Yeah, and away from T one thousand. I'll tell you where they did go to with the whole um, traveling Sarah Connor and a Terminator traveling into the future storyline. They got that from the Sarah Chronicle Chronicles. So I have never watched Which is watched also a this... James Cameron property. Right. <laughs> and I never, I never watched that, but yeah, somebody exactly... brought it up to me the other day and said, yeah, that's straight out of... They, yeah, they brought up that exact thing. Yeah. Um, which I, I it makes me like this movie more because... I see, I see a movie that is trying to is trying to be multimedia. Mm-hmm. I see a movie that you know, when the when the two Arnie Terminators from different movies are fighting each other, that's a two player video game. You know, it's reaching it's reaching out to different forms of media, and and here you know the 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 Sarah Connor Chronicles. It's like for those people who really like that series and and see that as part of canon. That's interesting for them. Yeah, right. You know, it's like when when all the people who love Clone Wars, when the, the Mandalorian does anything in Clone Wars, and people who haven't seen Clone Wars go, "What the fuck is going on? <laughs> who the fuck is he?" <laughs> and that's a sign of the times, but it's also, you know, 
it's you, it's drawing attention to other aspects of the canon. So it's right. I think le- I think it's sort of legitimate, but it's not saying. But there's you also know, you know it's interesting because which is yet another altern- alternate timeline within the Terminator universe. So it doesn't bear thinking about. Okay. Well, the other thing that this movie does, and it does it unapologetically, because every other, except for the last movie, but, you know, certainly the first three movies are predicated on this idea of this unstoppable killing machine is coming for you, and it's never going to stop. Yes. So it's coming after you and after you and after you, and you, defeating it is almost always by happenstance and accident. You know, it's just like... Right, you right. don't. The, you the can't movie, come up with a said, plan. The movie has no has no narrative solution to how we kill a Terminator. Right. It just and this happens. movie says, "Oh no, go fuck yourself. All you need is a little acid bath. Done. Mm. You know." And there's yeah, something the, deeply the unsatisfying the about mm. that. Yeah. That you couldn't see. I think they couldn't see the wood for the trees because. You know, you you put that in, and it helps you with a plot point later, but it also mm-hmm. ruins the rest of the movie. <laughs> right. You know, like it's going to help you out later on. That piece of information uh-huh. to get you out of a story, you know, to to for a story fix. Yeah, but it renders the whole point of this movie null and void at the same time. Hmm. That's so on a on a big on a like a macro level, this movie is 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 bad and makes a lot of mistakes. On a micro level, it's very right. enjoyable and there's yeah. a lot of good things about it. It's the sad, That's interesting. Sad, uh, sad truth of it. Um, now, what do you make of Skynet essentially being a video game? Well, it's it's interesting. Like when the the title is awful. It's a terrible yeah. title. Yeah. The, well, probably the worst in the series. Um, and I was like, why did they, you know, why did they name the movie, never mind something in the movie, after what sounds like a, you know, a, like an in-world dated computer game or computer game system? Right. But in-world, that's kind of what it is too. It's a, hmm. it's like an, it, you know, it's an app that's going to sync everything up. Yeah, but um, even even in two thousand, even in twenty fifteen, yeah. I think it's a video. The, the, like game. I think this, it's a Sega Genesis reference, I right? Really yeah, I mean this movie, this this movie conce- concedes that this company is has a countdown to their product that is on every video billboard. Yeah, in the United States, and there's a lot sati- of those. I think that's more satire than anything else. Though. You think so? Yeah, that I think was my question. An- like. I think you can make license for like you know we're we're we've we've become even more de- you know the again like this series when it's working is good at contemporizing machine fear for whatever is going mm-hmm. on in the present day and with then it was like if you know we sync everything up you know that could be the new Skynet really is is like if, if yeah everything, right. If everything gets so synced that... But know, it's we, funny that this movie has this countdown clock that probably should feel menacing, but never does. No. I mean, of all the underdeveloped or overdeveloped ideas in this movie, I think think this part of it, it seems to me to be the part that was a bigger deal in another draft of this mm-hmm. movie. Then it ended up being in, gotcha. the, in, in yeah, the, finished, right. the finished product. In a, I say in that a not just because of what you just brought up, but also because of the use of an actor who I I absolutely love, um, uh, Matt Smith, who for some reason here is credited as Matthew Smith, which I've never seen him credited anywhere <laughs> else. Um, and he is Genesis. And he's in literally minutes of this movie. The sort of corporal... Yeah, he's the corporal digitized, and, he, and he's the guy who sticks the the cyborg clamp on John's face. Mm-hmm. He yeah, he's the embodiment of of Genesis, and you know he's played Doctor Who, and he's in Last Night in Soho, and you know yeah. he's a he's a fairly well known character actor, even at this time. But he and he's like top, almost top build in this movie, and he's barely in it. Same hmm. with Courtney B. Vance. 
Yes, I, I have it's questions like about Courtney B. Vance. In, he's in like, less, he has less screen if time. If you have Smith. Courtney B. Vance, please use Courtney B. Vance. <laughs> well, that too, but you know, like it, 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 it fe- I, I, you know, I have that feeling of like this movie was reshot, redrafted. Something, you know, some things got left on the cutting room floor because you wouldn't cast such big names in such minor roles mm-hmm. and have them have them in such like incidental parts of the movie that have no bearing on the main plot right i mean that's the way that's the way it seems to me but i get like satirically and you know as sci-fi i get it like it's just and they alluded to it in salvation as well like sinking is the new the new machine fear it's like that we're all gonna get sync you know that you sync all your machines together and they'll start working as one unit Mm-hmm. But because it's salvation, they didn't know what to do with that. Here, they know what to do with that, but it's very <laughs> broad and on the nose and not very convincing, as you've said. Right. It's just a. Yeah, it's just like it's an it's a it's an inver it's a con- contemporaneous inversion of of what Skynet already was. Uh, hmm. That that doesn't add anything new to the. To the yeah uh, right to the idea. Except no, yeah. the except where we are now in the internet era, that's it. Yeah, but right. that's fine. I have no, I don't I don't have any uh, problem with that. Its effectiveness, I agree with you, as a storytelling device, is poor. Okay. <laughs> also, also, and again, you, this this movie has more odd choices than bad choices. I think, mm-hmm. and one of those odd choices is switching location to San Francisco for no reason. I for no reason, right? Possibly think. I mean, those Planet of the Apes reboot movies did pretty well, but <laughs> like not so well that we got to go from L.A. to San Francisco, guys. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Maybe there was just tax incentives or something. Yeah, it might be that simple. Who knows? But because it, so, it doesn't like, seem to add anything. Nope. I mean, neither does. I'm sad to say in a movie that I actually like the time travel aspect of. Neither does going to 2017 so i was just going to ask about that makes no difference do, does the All only cosmetic. thing that give you is a a crutch to lean on for schwarzenegger's actual age yes right yes because we're trying like that that i have a note exactly that i think i think it's it's so we can get a convincingly aged arnie so he can have the robot arthritis and stuff yeah right because what's what's what I love absolutely love unreservedly about this movie is the fact that the Arnie's Terminator is now indistinguishable from Arnie as an aging actor. Yeah, right. Because he has robot arthritis. <laughs> and the most to me the most fascinating part of this movie which I was so grateful that the next movie picked up and ran with was the sense of this you get glimpses of of what Arnie's been doing while he's waiting for Sarah and, Re- and Kyle to get there. Yeah, right. Because he says he says something like, you know, I, I worked here until I was laid off. I'm like, I want to know about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you had a job? <laughs> and then in the next movie, they're like, he's got a family. He's a yeah, draper. Right. It's like, that's exactly where I wanted that to go. Totally. But you still get glimpses of it here. And it's still, it, it's like... It's like, yeah, what do you do? I mean, I guess the next movie is all about what happens. What do you do when you have nothing to do as a Terminator? (laughs) An off duty Terminator. Yeah, right. Um, But it's still. Yeah, I think I think you're right. I think that's the only reason because I can only find cosmetic reasons why we need to be in 2017. Mm -hmm. Like everything could have been done in 1984 or 1991. Right. Um, So, yeah, it must be. It must be that. Interesting. I <laughs> this this movie also does weird things. So when they when they they build this time machine for Sarah and Kyle to go through, mm-hmm. and naked, <laughs> right? They're naked, and. Then Arnold's supposed to meet them there. And he's fucking late. And he's late. Exactly. But uh, that's that's a problem, but that's like a problem. 
they cover it with a fairly funny line. It's of a just, good line. You know, it's just like, yeah, I got stuck in traffic. But if you have 30 plus years to prepare, yeah. you know, go there the day before. Go there. You but know, it's a nice idea. But it, yeah, exactly. It's a nice idea that he, even even he can't beat uh, the, the San Francisco traffic. Mm-hmm. And then the other thing this movie feels insistent upon doing is whenever these three heroes are confronted with the law mm. or or adjacent to the law, they like their bubble just shows up on the goddamn freeway. Mm-hmm. So two naked people appear on the freeway yeah, and cars are going all over the place. So the first place they are taken is the hospital. Yeah. And... Now we get J.K. back. Uh, well, I mean, well, we, you say back. We yeah, uh, we neglected to mention. So, in well, no, the... no, 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 no. Have you? That's, what do you mean back? Well, I have a I have a very poor record on this, so don't confuse me. <laughs> what I mean is, we see a younger version of him in 1984. He's one of the beat cops, right? But it's not J.K. Simmons. But it's not J.K. Simmons. And we never. But named the character that is back. But we never name that character as an older man. We never yeah, name that character. The in second you see him, you don't think that's the cop. I no, did. I thought it was Silberman. <laughs> I thought. <laughs> oh, really? I thought he was taken over from Silberman. Of course, I did. Oh, they recast. No, I... They recast Sarah Connor. They recast Kyle Reese. Why the fuck wouldn't they recast Silberman? No, they give too much play to that cop. The cops trying to arrest him at the beginning of that movie. Oh, you're talking about the beginning of this movie or the original? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, good. He's not in the original Terminator, though. No, 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 no. But he is, but he isn't. I looked I mean, up. There's a yes. cop there, and later he was right. named... Like, in 84, there are yeah. other cops, but there's no Asian cop. Yeah. He's so not, that's he's different. He's not Marie. He's but... not Marie from Rocky. Correct. That's just what I wanted to clear up. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, yeah, no, I... Yeah, you're absolutely right within the course of this movie, but... I just thought it's like it's so weird that he's so physically similar to what Silverman was Mm -hmm. and he dresses like him and he acts like him. (laughs) Yeah, but he's a cop. He's not. But he doesn't seem like a cop. He seems like a doctor. (laughs) It's just such a weird like (laughs) this movie didn't it didn't think about the finer points. And this is an area I like I I love having him in the movie. Oh, he's great. I don't really see why he's supposed why he needs to be in the movie. No, but yeah. I love having him in the movie for those for those line reads, as you said. Um, but you, sometimes I'm like, wait a minute, who's this guy a surrogate for? I know he's a surrogate for someone from the from the from the, from the original movie, but I don't know who. Right. I can't remember who. Yeah. Uh. Well, but now, we do, I mean... But we do... But speaking of which, speaking of legacy characters, Miles Dyson and his son... Yeah. That... Because I was so excited. I was like, oh, wow, this movie is going to follow up on a storyline that was abandoned from Tita. And then I remembered, oh, it's an alternate timeline. It doesn't matter. It doesn't happened. matter, right. <laughs> and I think that's my experience of this movie in a nutshell. And, and Getting yeah, excited I, I mean, about it so doesn't matter that you get an actor matter. of of quality like Courtney B. Vance and then say, I just like you to be in the movie and do nothing. They could have saved themselves some money. Couldn't they? Just yeah, like, yeah. Like you don't matter hey, at all. Hey, stand in over there. <laughs> right. Hey, stand, stand in with a mustache. Come over here. <laughs> Can you be in these two scenes and say nothing? <laughs> so we have a bit of a hospital fight escape. We have and, all the public service buildings. Oh yeah. Hospital well, that's what I mean. Is is they're 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 constantly. It's funny because in these movies, all of these things, these kinds of movies, these things never seem present. You're never mm. taken to a hospital. You're never taken to the police station. And in this movie, it always happens. That's really interesting. Yeah, it's everything. Like every sort of, it's every set piece from from the first couple of Terminator movies. Except that it's really performed. Like, now we're going yeah. to the hospital. Now we're going yeah, to... Now right. we're having a truck chase. Now we're having a... And that's... It's it's sort of... You know, that really is lurching from set piece to set piece. But it's also going, right. hey, here's the set piece. Remember this? At the same time. Mm-hmm. 
again, this sort of like, what kind of fan service are we doing? Are we trying to make a real time travel movie? What like what are we like what are we doing here? Right. And it gets caught in that Back to the Future two sort of. It's not quite a new movie, but it's also definitely not the same movie. Well, and we and so now we we meet John again. <sighs> yeah. And. This is where the screenplay is like one step ahead of the audience. <laughs> Maybe for the only time in the movie. Because we're convinced he's a shapeshifter. Mm -hmm. And he's a def he's a cyborg, but he's a completely new kind of cyborg. Yeah, right. And this is the moment where I was like, oh, well played. Well played. <laughs> well played screenplay that makes no sense and is probably conjoined from about seven different drafts. <laughs> That's funny. You made this part, you know, this is like when when Jerry Seinfeld and Larry David, you know, are writing two parts of the same episode and they realize that they that they overlap without them even knowing. Without, yeah, without <laughs> ever having to talk to each other. This is the, the golf ball in the whale's blowhole. And this is one of those weird moments, too, when you watch Dark, when you watch Dark Fate, this moment is the exact moment where they they borrow from this movie and the yeah. next movie mm -hmm. when John Connor falls down and he has that weird lithe kind of get up off the ground movement yeah where uh he's arching his back and just sort of coming mm -hmm. to his feet and they use that in the next movie yeah. for terminators as well the things they choose to borrow are very interesting to me it's i mean it's also cuz you can look at it as a full on you know a full on invert full on sequel inversion but you can also see it as an extrapolation of what salvation was getting to with you know by the end of that movie john has a, a robot heart and this mm -hmm. is a variation on that so again you know we've got continuity where you you don't need to have it yeah um, right on on both ends of this movie yeah which shows well, that which i think shows that it's a more it's definitely a more valuable movie in the franchise than people have given it credit for. yeah yeah all right well let's take another break yeah and we'll come back. We'll finish Enjoy, up. I'm enjoying talking about this. this back it's an movie. interesting, I'm telling you, it's an interesting <laughs> movie. All right. We'll be right back, everyone. If you like podcasts like I do, boy, do I have a treat for you. You need to stay on target and check out the Sounds and Cinema podcast. Listen as your host, sound designer and music creator, Tony Parham, and co-host, musical performer and sound lover, Derek Hansen, D-Rock if you're nasty, and I am, discuss all things sound related to film, television, stage, and theatrical productions. They discuss environmental sounds, bioacoustics, dialogue, the nature of communication through sound. But as an added bonus, they drink beer and try to... Stay on target. Find them wherever you get your podcasts and listen to the pure mania of a man who can charitably be described as Doug, the dog from Up, and another man with a soothing and sultry voice trying to get that man to... Stay on target. That's the Sounds and Cinema Podcast. Tune in and listen to the sounds they are creating just for you. And we are back once again, ladies and gentlemen. Tom and I are here, of course, discussing our love-hate relationship with Terminator Genesis. I don't know if I, I don't even go so I don't far ever as go hate. to hate. Yeah. You're right. I don't go to hate. I go love, uh, dislike, love dislike relationship. Yeah. It doesn't have the same ring about it, but it's right. it's more accurate. <laughs> love confused by. Yeah. Now, once we have the reveal of John Connor, mm. does this movie take off or slow down for you? <laughs> the, it gets started. <laughs> well, that's a fair point. It finally begins. It's, it's it, yeah. It, again, it's like every, every, like everything that you expect to happen at a certain point in the movie happens at another part of the movie, and you're constantly looking at the running time, going, "This is just happening now." Yeah, <laughs> right. But then, and then you think, "Well, actually, what has just happened?" Well, not really anything, for a long time. So, 
I think it's one of those. Well, um, we go on a nostalgia but it gives tour. It, you know, it gives it a it gives it a you know kick in the ass for for like twenty minutes. Mm -hmm. It's a good like twenty. We minutes. got MRI machines, right? Got... Which is another, which is like the acid bath thing. It's like yeah, if he can be defeated by that. Also, it's the same as melting, really. Mm -hmm. um, I have a note here that does say this movie is a little too clever for its own good. <laughs> but but also like I, I was like is that the only reason we're in 2017 i mean aside from you know accurately carbon dating arnold schwarzenegger um <laughs> is it, <laughs> right because because we didn't have mris in the 80s is that it that, so we yeah we, we needed an escape and so we can make a dot com joke which seems like <laughs> already a dated joke by yeah, 2050. Right. This, it's this the screenplay in terms of it in time travel there's time traveling in the screenplay in the dialogue as well because when they're in when they're, <laughs> when they're in the 80s they make references that would only be understood to the people living in that time not to the audience watching the movie so at one point someone says okay tj hooker mm -hmm. which by the way i want to steal for instead of okay boomer that's my new one okay, <laughs> that's amazing and then they make re in the 90s they make reference to tin foil on the microwave yeah right and like it's like these are very specifically dated references but we're in 2015 watching this movie hello yeah right so maybe that's an oversight but it's like an, another unusual kind of quality of like that reference is not to me, it's to the people in the movie, yet I'm the one who hears it, and actual people who live then don't hear it. So who is that for? Right. <laughs> who are you saying that for? <laughs> oh. and, I, and I laughed, and I laughed. And I laughed, and I laughed, and I laughed. <laughs> Which is laughed. the point, isn't it, really? Right. Um, now... The hospital is where they escape on the chopper, right? They go to the roof? Possibly, or is that yeah. the police station? <laughs> uh, you caught me. I haven't seen the film. <laughs> you laid your trap and I fell into it. No, I don't remember. I don't remember. My notes are all about Pepsi Max Zero Sugar Machines. <laughs> which I thought was a fantastic update. Of the T2 Pepsi fetish. That's funny. Pepsi Max Zero Sugar. <laughs> Whoever was behind that. I want to shake their hand. Chef's kiss. Um, so, I mean, but basically, like you had said earlier, this is the section of the movie where we're, we are kind of lurching from set piece to set piece. Because we have I'm the just, hospital. I'm amazed. I'm amazed at how late in the movie they go to that police station. Right. Yeah. Because we Even have hospital. We have bus this, chase earlier, and then we have uh, police station. And that bus day. Oh well. Let me put it this way: the bus chase is it's not absurd. Good. And. Again, it's one of those things like, is this the only reason we moved to San Francisco yeah, so that we yeah. could have a bus chase on the Golden Gate Bridge? So we can do a dirty Harry callback. Yeah. But again, and I'll give that I'll give this movie this credit at least. The CGI does not look as good as they think it does. No. No. But it looks way better than Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines. Yeah, I agree. So I'll with give that. it that much credit, but it's still just... not good enough. Like, n nothing is ever going to look better than a practical effect. Right. When you're watching The Dark Knight and that truck flips over, mm -hmm. that's a truck flipping over, and that's well, why it looks great. Well, you don't even have to go to another franchise. Terminator 2 knows the value yeah, of pra practical you're right. stunt work. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's again, it's like, it's that Velveeta feeling. It's like it's closest mm -hmm. to original flavor Terminator, but it feels too performed to be the real thing. Right. Uh, and the CGI is a huge part. I, I actually thought... And this is a section where the jokes don't work quite as well. Arnold's head nice going Nice to through... see you. Nice to see you, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I got a real Batman and Robin kind of <laughs> flashback <laughs> trauma at that point. 
<laughs> also a little bit of McBain. I, I, yeah. I, I think I think between that his character between Mister Freeze and McBain, that line has been said. <laughs> yeah, it must have been right. <laughs> um, I also thought I also got a kind of. Again, oh, yeah, this is post that as well. Final destination. Is it the fifth final destination where they're on the bridge? Yeah. On the coach. Yeah. The one, the one that was basically like a cinematic version of The Office. Right. With Todd Packer <laughs> as the boss. With yeah, exactly. I got and again, like you know, it, it's like you, it's like you've got, you've worked really hard to make this feel like a scene from a Terminator movie. But why am I thinking about a bunch? But of why am movies? I thinking about Final Destination? <laughs> Final Destination and Dirty Harry and not Terminator Two. Right. But I, I mean, you know, I like. The bad boys mugshot scene, don't you? It has a great button. We got that Arnold smile running gag back. <laughs> this is what they showed in the honest trailer to show us what a terrible movie this was. Oh, really? Yeah. But, I mean... But to me, this is... I don't know. It's Yeah, it's goofy comedy and it's it's silly. But there's precedent for this. Bad to the bone, macho man, bad boys. It's just completing the trilogy. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the, it's the same, you know, it's a run it's the running gag, you know, in in Terminator 2, 3 and then this movie, Arnold does something that subverts the kind of macho image. Here it's the smile. It's the thumbs up in the second movie. In the third movie, it's everything he does <laughs> from minute from the first time he arrives on screen to when he leaves. Um, so I sort of find it oddly comforting, and I don't I don't know why everyone had a big problem with it. I don't know why there's a cultural problem with it. We started this trend of self spoofing in like Terminator Two. I don't think uh, I don't think the general public thinks no. of. Terminator 2 as self spoofing yeah, in the way that you do. Because they remember the fucking liquid metal and how great that looks. They, yeah. They don't remember the after school special stuff. I still I also think the tone's yeah. different in that movie in terms of in terms of But this is just but this is just goofy comedy. Yeah. And it's tonal inconsistency, yes. I agree. Right. I agree with that, but I'm I'm to me, what is kind of alien about that scene is not the comedy. It's that why why are we here in the screenplay? Right? <laughs> How why it's like what are we? <laughs> this scene either comes much earlier in the movie or not at all. Mm -hmm. This is a lot to get through before the end of the movie. We still there, got a, there's like a, so a, a much to yeah. Get through. It really, it really is. It does, it, like, you start feeling the weight of this movie mm -hmm. about halfway through. But again, maybe it's just greatest hits package. You know, it's like, oh, we got to have some turmoil in a police station. Mm -hmm. No, it does feel like that. It does feel yeah. like, it. This it certainly feels, and so does the next movie, as a, hmm. hey, let's go back to the beginning. Interesting. I didn't feel that by the next. The... But, oh, in the next movie, it feels... Okay. I noticed it a lot more on my second viewing than the first hmm. viewing, but it feels as though they're trying to hit uh, entryway points. Oh, yeah. No, you know, I, I from the first mean. movie, and the police station is now... In the next movie, it's, it's exchanged for a detention center, but in this mm -hmm. movie, we're at the cop station. Well, I think I was I was fooled by how interesting that choice of a detention center is. But It's you better. Know, it, it, it's it's definitely formula. You're, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Um, but it I is it, it is I the helicopter it... is after the police station. Okay. It is. I'm remembering now. I was I was very like interested like all the as I said before all the Terminator movies are influenced by Chris Marker's La Jete, which was also the inspiration for Twelve Monkeys. Mm -hmm. And now this movie is ripping off Twelve Monkeys. Right. So there's a paradoxical cycle going on just in. The films they're in. in the film universe, yeah, in, in the time travel film universe, yeah, right, <laughs> which is kind of fascinating because young Kyle, I mean, that's straight out of Twelve Monkeys, yeah, right, that idea, 
That's so it's funny. Of, you of all the, of all the bring it up because that was my next well. note. I was say, I say Kyle meets Kyle. What do you think, Tom? <laughs> That's what I wrote. I, uh, I again, why you know why? But mm -hmm. also okay. <laughs> Sure. Right. Yeah, you exactly. know, it's, it's like it's like this movie again. You, you know, you got to talk the about, thing like, about this setting movie. expectations. You know, uh -huh. this movie begins with T two and T one Arnie fighting. It's like, well, after this, <laughs> you know, like die another day with the invisible car. After that, nothing matters. Anymore. Nothing matters, right? <laughs> yeah. And it's like if you've already done that, you've already had that meeting. Mm -hmm. You can basically do what you want. But Kyle meets but Kyle, and I, you know, when those things time. happen in this movie, I'm always thinking, like you said, I, I'm always thinking that's not terribly interesting, but okay. Yeah, I got another song. I've got another song title for you, but this time from the '90s. Skynet as a boy. <laughs> I think it was the the unrecorded Bjork hit of the '90s. <laughs> that's amazing. Um. Yeah, no, uh, that, but that's another interesting, in, interesting inversion. <laughs> it's another inversion. <laughs> Skynet becomes like John Connor becomes Skynet, and Skynet becomes John Connor. Because mm -hmm. Skynet, because or genus wise, is represented as a child. Yes. So John Connor has grown from a child into a robot, and a robot has grown as. <laughs> Gone <laughs> from a, a machine Gone to a from child. a malevolent to a machine to a to a child. Yeah, yeah. That's something, right? That's. Uh, I think it's, it's... you know when, when they were when they were pinning the drafts of the draft scenes of this movie to the wall. Well, <laughs> there was definitely a piece of string between that. Yeah, what's going on in John Connor's world and what's going on with Janice Weiss? <laughs> See, definitely. what I imagine is them putting like scene cards up on a board. And at some point, somebody saying, oh, we need some string. I'm fucking confused. I need and to know how all these things day, relate like, to each other. Who took the fucking string? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but again, so that we have that helicopter chase. And my note is, again, CGI, not in your favor. It looks no. terrible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, this, there's a lot in the there's a lot in this movie that I was just like. I just, you know, I had to print it. I was like, sign of the times. <laughs> There's nothing you can do about it. It happened. You just yeah. have to live with it. Yeah. It's, uh... Do you... Because I have a note here that says, trying to milk tension and or drama out of getting... Uh, out of having Sarah Connor really care about pops. Hmm. I, I, again, I just thought of it in straight inversion terms. It's like, yeah. So it's, it's that a, kind of musical chair archetypes again, that we saw in the Rocky series of like, now Sarah, now Sarah, it's just one of those things you're just terminated. don't ever think Sarah Connor would do as <laughs> we know her. Well, you can, and this movie saying, a, go fuck yourself. Of, there's a bit of a course correction of that in the next movie. Yeah, right. Spends the entire movie hating and mistrusting him. Yeah. I, you know, of, of all the reasons to sort of go back and fuck with the timeline, having like romance and tenderness between the characters, I'm fine with that. Okay. It's like, you know, maybe, you know, maybe there are fans out there who wanted to see what would happen if Kyle and Sarah got together. Right. Probably not many, but there's probably a contingent of people who've written fanfic. Fan fiction. That's what this is. It's fan fiction. Yeah. What if fan fiction disguised as a time travel movie <laughs> again and right. again? Yeah. And it, it's, you know, it, it on that le like I. And I find Jay Courtney almost as inoffensive as as I do uh, Amelia Clark. So this man, we are in lockstep because this is one of the thing I wanted to talk about. By the way, Anton Yelchin was the worst possible Kyle Reese. Nothing on him. But... Well, and that's the thing. Like, I don't have anything against Jai Courtney. as I don't think he's a bad actor. But I also don't particularly like him in this movie. I don't think he's a great actor. No. 
He's not, but... He's just, yeah, he's an inoffensive Carl Reese after a very offensive Carl Reese. Yeah. But nothing's, it's like, you know when two puzzle pieces you think are, <laughs> are, are the two that fit, and it's only ten minutes later that you realize, oh my god, that doesn't fit. But if he wasn't That's how casting... both Amelia Clark and Jai Courtney yeah. feel like in this movie to me. Yeah, they're, they're like placeholders. And I hate they're to like... be as when... reductive as this, but one of the things that just drives me nuts is she's so short. <laughs> yeah. They even um... make a joke out of it. <laughs> for their mug shots. Well, at least they know. Um... I don't know. <laughs> but then, if, if Jai Courtney wasn't in this movie, he wouldn't have the bragging rights of saying... I was in two long-running franchise part fives within a year of each other. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Two long-running, two underappreciated part fives of long-running action franchises. Well, we'll say one's underappreciated. One's appreciated exactly as much as it probably should be. It's still underappreciated. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. One, But for good reason. Two hated... Yes. Um, but it, but it's weird, weird to me sort of how they just slot into those roles to a point where you don't mind. Mm -hmm. And that's hard. That's very hard when you're working with yeah. such iconic characters played by such iconic actors. The fact that they get even to that level of inoffensive, I think, is an achievement All right. on the part of this on the part of this movie. Um, hmm. And yeah, we I, she, with Sarah. You I, there are to... times in this movie though where I feel as though I'm longing for different actors making different choices. I sup. I, I yeah. I don't. And I, I don't. Mean, I think. You know, I think it's fine with the material. I think they're fine with the material they've got. I don't yeah, think you okay. need to be aspiring higher than right. than these two. Um, there's, there, I mean, there's even there's the kind of roots of Sarah fighting back against the inherent sexism of the time travel paradox. Mm -hmm. You know, like, so basically, my only value here is to give is to like have sex with you and give birth. Right. But that never goes anywhere in this movie. But again, the next movie. Well, runs and that's with it. those are some of my and that last. Makes the next movie a better movie. It's like yeah. it's like I wonder whether Dark. Like a horrible feeling that Dark Fate wouldn't have been as good as it was had it not come after Genesis. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> if he didn't have that runway. That Interesting. This movie gives it. But this movie, so I mean, we have that helicopter chase, and of course, the helicopter crashes right in front of Skynet. <laughs> 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 again you know they, they 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 got that string yeah and they were like oh well this works if you put it right if it lands right next yeah. to the stider <laughs> otherwise we're gonna have to go to another police station and right. the hospital exactly <laughs> and we and we're already two hours into the movie <laughs> what if they crash and then we take them to a hospital no 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 we already went to a hospital oh you're right well we'll just have a crash in front of skynet can you not see this string going from these yeah, two cars? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I I do like the line. And again, this feels like screenwriter fatigue here, kind of kind of bleeding into the script. You're nothing but a relic from a deleted timeline. Yeah, they say that, <laughs> and I was like, I was like, it sounds like you're kind of uncomfortable with this. <laughs> direction that the movie's gone in <laughs> I mean like if anyone said that to me in any context I'd blow my own brains out instantly I'm surprised that Terminator doesn't do the same I'm surprised that oh Kyle Reese doesn't do the same it's time to end it all it's like, it's like fuck yeah you're right um, and the robot what about this last end. set piece for you though inside of the factory I don't have much on it really I mean, uh, some of the notes I have are. I mean, this would this wouldn't happen we, really we, till we the very end. We went back to the exposed metal time travel plot point. Mm -hmm. And I've got some notes about how they do what they did in T three and they make Arnie a, a villain again mm -hmm. to sort of speak to the first 
movie. And I don't have much else. What do you think? I don't know. It just feels a little bit hollow because we're mm. a hologram can chase them all over the place. <laughs> Oh, you to- yes, I see what you mean. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's not that, very that's interesting. A, it's such a such an underbaked part of the movie. Mm-hmm. And I wonder whether it's underbaked because it's edited out or just never right. was never written properly. It's difficult to tell. It is. I definitely think it was supposed to be a bigger part of the movie. I remember Matt Smith being hyped up more in the publicity before this movie came out than... Hmm. That that's, has happened to this guy a few times. That's weird. He was supposed to be in uh, one of the Star Wars, um, one of the most recent Star Wars movies. His character just disappeared somewhere in pre-production. He was the Gary Oldman of uh, <laughs> of this of the se- of the <laughs> the sequel of the Star Wars sequel trilogy. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I don't get the sense he's difficult to work with. It's the problem is in production. It's funny um, you say that because I think um what's his name? Alessandro? The guy from Many Saints of New York Newark? Navola? Mm. Because I remember seeing a thing for him too. It's just funny that it's the same director, but uh he has he has more credits of movies that have never ended up being released or parts that got sent is to the cutting Dickie room Maltesante? floor. What's that? Is he Dicky Maltesante? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't care what happens to him because he ruined ruined that movie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is what happens Fine. when you put it. We put a decent character actor in a leading man's role. Um, but then, but. Like in the like, it's funny because you know I've credited this movie for thinking a bit more imaginatively about paradoxes, but in the end, it's all about crossing the T's, dotting yeah, the I's. Yeah, right, exactly. It's like, I got to go back and do this thing because the paradox tells me I have to. Like it yeah. all comes down to that. It's like there's got to be a more interesting. <laughs> well, the other thing that leaves like, the problem with jumping from set piece to set piece, and jam packing your movie with as much as this movie does is that by the end they're going for some sort of melodrama and some romance that's not earned there's there's not a real good reason for these two characters to now be in love it's it's tracked it's it's um, not yeah, i mean you know but barely but it's tracked throughout barely. The, it's throughout, you know there is a little bit of a rom-com thing of like Hey, I hate this guy, but future tells me. But I guess I'll get in this bubble and be naked with him. Yeah. So it's tracks. It's not convincing, but I, I, it's it's not like, like most of this film, it's like, it's not like stuff is coming out of nowhere. This movie's preparing you for it. Mm -hmm. Does it work? Is it convincing? Not at all. Yeah. Right. But don't say you weren't warned. (laughs) That would be a great log line. Right? Terminator Genesis. Don't say you went word. <laughs> um, and then, of course, they do the, the voiceover bullshit at the end. Like voiceover vague... bullshit. And then is it at the end of the credits? The complete oh, end the of the post-credits? credits? <laughs> Again, that was when I went. I printed it. I went sign of the times. Yeah. Post credit scene. Angling for, and in the terms of the franchise, we're angling for a sequel, but we don't know what we're going to do. Yeah. So we'll put the vaguest possible image in we possibly can. Right. Of like time lightning appearing in a machine. Um, and you know, the line, the future is not set. And we have like a platitude like this at the end of every movie. It's like, just decide on something, guys. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like, it's just saying, it's basically they might as well end the movie by saying, we want a sequel. Yeah, yeah, that's that's all it is. Um, I got some, I got some good credit checks. All right, give me some credit checks. I'm very I mean, proud of overall, this. I'm gonna, I, you know, this movie is is again, it's a strange movie, but it, I don't, I don't know why it would possibly make people mad. Yeah. But uh, peaks and valleys and hits and misses. It's interesting. But it's ping like, it's ping ponging and bat and balling around. Enough that you hit something interesting occasionally. Yeah. But 
we leave that very we leave that interesting stuff very quickly and go on to something not so good. Right. That's what I that's all I'd add to that. But you're absolutely right. Uh the two characters in this movie called Connor are both called Clark in real life. <laughs> John Connor, Sarah Connor, played by Jason Clark, Amelia Clark. You're right. They are they are related on screen. Also they spell it the same way. Yeah. They're related on screen, but not off screen. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> so the the Yeah, let, right. Let me tell uh, this this next one gives you a glimpse into how hand zimmered out I am. Okay? How much I've had to endure this man's music in the movies I've seen recently. <laughs> I saw at the beginning of the movie that the score was by a man called Lorne Bolf. Lorne Bolfe, I don't know how you say it. And when the score came in, I went, oh, well, he's going to have to give Hans Zimmer some royalty money for stealing his Dark Knight score. There comes the credits. Since programming, Hans Zimmer. <laughs> so clearly Hans Zimmer is this musical auteur that I can detect sonically. Right. Um... Yeah, and uh, I just just to end by saying that there's another one, <laughs> this on the, during the credits. There's another one of these weird in and out of universe soundtrack songs that we seem to be seeing mm-hmm. a lot of recently. Yeah, it's like any any rap track of 2015, but with a few nods to what's going on in the movie. So it'll go like <laughs> mumble rap, mumble rap, mumble rap, Judgment Day, yeah. mumble rap, mumble rap, mumble rap, mumble rap. <laughs> but that's. <laughs> that's all you have got. That's uh, good. But I love those credits. All right. Well, we did that's, it. That's probably, i got to say, that's probably my favorite set of credits so far. Is that right? Yeah. All right. In my rankings, Terminator Genesis. <laughs> Terminator Genesis the at best the top. Credit. Oh, come on. Two Connors played by two Clarks? When I get does that it. happen? I get it. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for Terminator Genesis. You're going to have to tell us what you think. Where does this movie lie in your ranking? Do you think it's good or bad? Find us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Send us an email to everythingsequel at gmail.com. For Tom Stewart of Lonesome Whistle Productions, Michael Schantz here of the How Dare You Awards. Say goodbye, Tom. We're not even sure he speaks English. (laughs) <laughs> that was when the movie became funny all of a sudden yeah that that one hit that one landed definitely really did also i'm really glad that arnie didn't make that line not happen mm-hmm. yeah exactly <laughs> that shows he's growing as a person <laughs> and you know you know in what? increments and in small increments yeah and his grasp of english is getting better as well i only noticed one one fuck up, one linguistic fuck up in the whole movie when he said compatibility. <laughs> Apart from that, he nailed the English for the, the English movie. language. Yes, Excellent. which has always been a bit of a struggle for him. You sent me a video mm-hmm. of Schwarzenegger talking about his biggest movie roles. It was kind of alarming to hear, yeah, how he sounds sort of like an Austrian Trump. Yeah, true. Yeah, you know, like cadence and I like and all of these sorts of things, and you know, and I don't know. The, you know that he's a much smarter man than Trump. Yeah, but there was something in his vocabulary that uh, really reminded me of him. It was interesting. Wow. For what it's um, worth, ladies and gentlemen. And, and back in the day, we thought he was as bad as Trump, and then history told us that that uh, that was erroneous. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> Give me he's Arnie. Actually, he's a pro-environmental hero. Right. If you yeah. look at history only backwards. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Stay tuned. Coming up next, Terminator Dark Fate. Woo! I agree. But this was, this was, I'm going to say it again. This was a nice runway. Yeah. This was a, you know, we've, we've cleared, we've cleared the, the, the endless customs borderline that was, that was salvation. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. We're on the runway (laughs) and now we're on vacation. Yeah, exactly. 
All right. We'll be back. I didn't even plan that. We'll be back. I mean, come on. <laughs>